Hi, my name is Kieran Milne. I'm a tech lead with the Juniper Networks Certification Program in Education Services here at Juniper Networks. This learning byte is going to focus on OSPF V2 router IDs and how they are assigned on Junos devices. So a router ID uniquely identifies each device in an OSPF network. It takes the form of a 32-bit number and really represents each router for OSPF related activities in that domain. Uh, so some examples here. When doing link state database exchanges, uh, the router ID really represents who sent each link state advertisement. So if you look in the database of a given, uh, a given OSPF router, you're going to see a variety of link state advertisements that came from a variety of sources, and the router ID will help to identify who sent each LSA. It's also used in some cases for designated router elections. Depending on how the election is taking place and the parameters involved, the uh, router ID may be used as a tiebreaker. And router IDs can be used in certain cases as part of configuration. And an example of that is uh, they're used as the destination point for configuring virtual links. So in terms of assigning router IDs on Junos devices, there are a couple of methods you can work with. The first is a dynamic method, and it's that the device will auto-assign its router ID using interface IP addressing. So the first step, or the first option, is that OSPF will automatically use uh, the loopback interface, and specifically the lowest configured IP address on the loopback interface. Now there's one exception here, and that's the 127 address range. If your loopback has a 127 address, that address will not be used in this process. Now, if you don't have a loopback address configured, uh, the device will then move on to the physical interface addressing, and an OSPF will make use of the lowest configured IP address across all interfaces on the device and use that as the router ID for the device. So with those dynamic options said, another option is a manual option. You can use configuration, specifically the router ID parameter under the edit routing options hierarchy of the CLI, and manually configure a router ID for the device from there. In practical terms, you probably want to use the manual option. Uh, you know, the dynamic options work fine for a lab or for testing, um, but they are just that, they are dynamic. IP addressing can change, interfaces can go up and down. Uh, you know, the manual option represents a static, reliable way to identify this device with a specific OSPF router ID. And that brings us to the demo portion here. Uh, very simple lab setup, as you can see. We will spend most of our time on R1, and we'll use R2 occasionally to verify some things. Okay, so here we are on R1, and let's look at a couple of things before we get started. First of all, some interface information for you. We have our GE001 interface, and uh, it has one address active, 10.10.10.1, and it also has a secondary or an inactive address, uh, so we're not using it right now. We also have an interface GE004, and it's also inactive, so not be used right now. Uh, we have a loopback interface. It also is inactive and not being used right now, but we have all the things we need here. So let's take a look at some OSPF parameters. First of all, OSPF itself only using the one interface GE001. So that interface points over to R2. Very simple, not much going on from an OSPF configuration perspective. And you can see we have our adjacency up, our connection over to R2 at this dot two address. And just to say check, let's go over to R2 and make sure things look the same over there. There we go. Looking back towards R1 and we can see things look good. So let's just check a couple of other things. This command show OSPF overview is a good way to check the router ID for the device. In fact, it's a very simple way. So R1 has the router ID of 101010. Now if we scroll back up here, you can see that that is the address we would expect in fact. It's the lowest uh, it's the lowest physical uh, interface address we have on the device right now and we have no loopback configured and so that's the the address we would expect. 101010 and there it is. So, as we continue on here, let's start to uh, change a couple of things. First of all, let's activate that secondary address that is lower 
on this GE001 interface. And it's 10.1. There we go. And uh, let's commit that. Remember our router ID right now is 10, 10, 10, 1. And as we commit that second address that's lower on our 001 interface, when we check our overview command again, we see our router ID has just changed. It's taken the new address of 10111 because it's lower. Now let's also carry on here and activate our GE004, pardon me, GE004 interface and see uh, how that affects things as well. Just to remind us, there we go, GE004 has an even lower address, but one thing to note is it's not in OSPF, it's not in the OSPF configuration, uh, it's simply a physical address on the device, and so let's see what happens when we try this. Remember our current router ID up here, 10111. Rerun our command, and there it is, our router ID changed. It's now taken on the lowest physical address on the device right now, even though it's not part of OSPF specifically. All right, so let's carry on here, and let's go to the next step and add the loopback interface into this mix. Here's our loopback interface. Now, this is a higher IP address. And let's see what happens here. So current router ID of 8888. Run our overview command. Sure enough, the loopback zero interface takes precedence when it's active and available and not a 127 address. There it is. We've got our addressing. And so, uh, you know, things look, uh, look good so far. Let's just take a quick look over here and see what things look like over here. Now, one thing to note right away is there's our neighbor, so R2 looking back towards R1. But notice we now are using an updated router ID. So we are advertising ourselves, or our RT, uh, R1 is advertising itself using its current router ID, and we see it here on R2. So, let's do one more thing here, and, that's, let's, uh, and, and that is, let's try the manual option. So let's use our, uh, our routing options, router ID parameter, and see what happens there. So there's our command, and let's use something that will be very easy to see. And there's our router ID right there as part of our configuration. Let's commit this. Remember, our current router ID is 111, 111, 111, 111. And let's see what happened here. Just as we would expect, our router ID is now taken over again by the manual configuration step under routing options this time. And let's just double check ourselves over on R2. And there we go. R2 is now seeing things correctly as well with the new router ID. So that's a series of uh, options you can use for configuring router IDs for OSPF v2 on Genos devices. That takes us to the end of this learning bite. Hope you've enjoyed it. Uh, thanks for watching. Bye for now. Visit the Juniper Education Services website to learn more about courses. View our full range of classroom, online, and e-learning courses. Learning paths, industry segment and technology specific training paths. Juniper Networks Certification Program, the ultimate demonstration of your competence. And the training community, from forums to social media, join the discussion.